Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. Now this video is going to be a follow up to the previous video that I uploaded on the channel around an updated valuation for Seritage growth properties going through both a liquidation value uh, if all the properties at Seritage were sold today, what do I think it might be worth per share after uh, obviously selling the properties and paying off all the debt and then distributing any cash kind of left to shareholders. And then uh, also looking at a uh, 2025 value after they've done some of their redevelopments. And uh, the feedback on that video um, was really positive. I super appreciate uh, anyone who took the time to even watch that video and also like and maybe comment on it as well. Um, and there was also some great discussion happening in the comment section. There was um, a few really good questions around what happens with Seritage if there's a real estate downturn or if interest rates go up or if uh, developments take longer and are more expensive than initially planned. Uh, and it's always kind of good, I think, to get the other side of this equation. I'm someone who is a shareholder in Seritage. Um, I obviously want Seritage to do well. So it's always good to try and think of what potentially could go wrong. You know, the three most important words in uh, investing are margin of safety, and I want to uh, protect myself from, from permanent loss of capital and downside where possible. So um, in this video, I'm basically gonna go through some of the uh, more popular questions and discussion points that popped up from uh, that Seritage valuation video. So if you do enjoy it, please hit like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Uh, but without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first discussion point that I want to touch on is around uh, capital expenditures for redevelopment. There were a few questions around this, uh, and there's a good comment here from Tim that kind of sums up uh, what a lot of people were thinking from this one. So uh, Tim says, good work, Tom. My only comment is that the capital expenditures for redevelopment are probably low. I'm a construction cost estimator, and prices have gone up 25 to 30% in the last 18 months. Always fantastic to get some industry expertise. Really appreciate that. Uh, lead times on equipment and materials have gone up with the supply chain constraints so the developments are likely to be over budget and take longer than expected uh, but those increases shouldn't be enough to kill the thesis good work thanks uh, Tim appreciate that comment so um, yeah I mean you're working in the industry and you probably know this a whole lot better than me and uh, the capex costs and the redevelopment costs are probably the area where I still need to do the most work on kind of moving forward um, I've pulled a lot of assumptions from Matt Peterson's work um, and I want to kind of clarify if possible kind of what's built into the 800 million in redevelopment costs that I assumed you know would be required between now and 2025 um, and like you say you know there's some potentially really good margin of safety here this is not financial advice do your own work on Seritage and don't just buy it because I'm buying it but um, you know if we look at the net asset value or the 2025 value versus the current market price there's a pretty significant delta and um, I don't have the numbers right in front of me here but I will put them up on the screen you know if that 800 million in uh, capital expenditures was say 50% higher and it was actually uh, 1.2 billion for example uh, this is kind of what the numbers would look like for Seritage so it definitely 100% has an impact but um, it uh, is hopefully not enough to yeah, break the entire thesis with having a good margin of safety there so I um, appreciate the comment Tim there are a few other comments along those same kind of lines so it's definitely something I'm going to continue to work on and I want to really see if I can clarify the current situation at Seritage around, uh, you know, potential redevelopment costs. I guess one of the great things, um, once we do have a fully developed property and for some of the properties that have already been developed at Seritage, is that people often refer to real estate and particularly real estate that has a lot of debt, which Seritage certainly does, uh, as, a glue, as a good inflation hedge. But the thing to keep in mind, the sort of Achilles heel of that thesis is um, if you still have a lot of money to spend on capital expenditures and redevelopments uh, that can kind of break that thesis ideally what you want for that inflation protection to be maximized is you pay for everything in you know yesterday's dollars all your capex is already done and then your income over time from rent is hopefully steadily going up and you're earning that in um, higher sort of nominal dollar amounts and it sort of inflates away the debt and hopefully the asset prices sort of keep up with inflation and maybe even run a little bit more than inflation and uh, that can create some pretty serious wealth over time but um, having the capex out of the way is quite a big component of really uh, maximizing uh, that you know inflation hedge kind of ability that real estate might have so um, appreciate your question there Tim. 
Now the second sort of broad category around um, you know potential flaws in the valuation for Seritage, which are um, very important to consider, I think, and are um, potentially you know significant risks with with the work I've done on on Seritage, is uh, basically around what happens if there's a real estate downturn. You know, I was valuing uh, most of the real estate just on recent comparable sales, but you know what happens if 2020 and 2021 uh, sales numbers are really inflated and maybe 2018 or 2019 uh, prices are more realistic or uh, what happens if you know by the same token effectively what happens if cap rates or essentially the multiples that people are putting on the um, cash generating ability of these properties what happens if people aren't willing to pay as much for that cash moving forward you know for the premier developments I was using a six and a half percent cap rate and other words when a real estate investor um, potentially purchases one of those properties they want um, a six and a half percent net operating income on the cash that you know they put into that deal assuming that there's no kind of debt involved just to, to keep it simple you know what happens if the required yield that people you know are looking to fetch from commercial real estate goes to eight or nine percent that could have a very serious uh, impact on the asset value and an even more serious impact on the uh you know the equity at seritage because seritage does have debt and it's obviously levered to that sort of asset base that it has in real estate so the comment here from uh, bryce harris is a really good one to kind of give uh, some thoughts around this topic uh, and bryce says might be an interesting exercise to forecast a real estate market re-rate into the valuation i'm an architect near dallas i was actually very impressed with the amount of uh local uh you know realist pe- people involved in real estate in and around sort of seritage's properties uh whether that's dallas or we had um some people who you know used to always go to one of the seritage malls as kids and uh or to one of the sears stores as kids and, and that kind of stuff so very cool to um see someone or see some people a little bit closer to uh, the actual seritage growth properties uh assets than me here in New Zealand so uh, that's just a little side note but uh, Bryce says might be an interesting exercise to forecast a real estate market re-rate into the valuation I'm an architect near Dallas and I'm somewhat concerned that using current market values as the basis for the valuations is optimistic we've seen a pretty unprecedented cost inflation in both construction and property value for the last 18 months with a real chance that interest rates rise over the next three years and likely asset value reduction, it could change outcomes significantly. Probably not an investment killer, but could help define a worst case thesis. Thanks for your work on this. Um, yeah, appreciate that comment, Bryce. Um, and again, I don't have the numbers right in front of me here, but I will run a kind of scenario on a real estate market downturn and uh, put it up on the screen here so that you can see those numbers and again um, you know (laughs) three most important words in investing a margin of safety and uh, like you kind of got out towards the um, the end of your comment here Bryce potentially not a uh, investment killer because you know in my view at least there's such a big delta between the um, liquidation value at SRG and the current price that it probably does offer quite a bit of underlying protection uh, but again it has an impact so if we maybe look at a couple of different options here um, I will show you a chart of what commercial property prices have done in the US over the past few years um, and you'll kind of see that it's 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 definitely run up and we have uh you know small short periods of time particularly in early 2020 when it came down a fraction but really wasn't that significant particularly if you compare it to like a obviously a 2008 2009 which was when you know big real estate bubble popped right so um you know let's let's look at a couple of different options here let's look at maybe what happens if real estate prices come down 15 percent um i think that would be a pretty significant drop which would probably catch a lot of headlines and uh let's also maybe do a 30 percent drop just so you can get a feel for that that would be very significant and that i think uh from memory probably rivaling the drop in commercial property prices uh, that we saw in the financial crisis in 2008-2009. So hopefully if we can survive that level of uh, decline in asset value at SRG, hopefully uh, you know we should have uh, plenty of, of downside protection built in. Now another comment I just want to cover off here is uh, one from uh, Jacques LaRue, hopefully Jacques, I'm 
pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, Jack says, great work, Tom, an interesting reference point. The money investor wrote an interesting article on Seeking Alpha where he thinks he identified a large property sale SRG did after the Q3 lease. So that would be after the uh, list of properties that I got to kind of drive that valuation. Um, comment goes on to say he estimates based on what looked like some solid info around property taxes that they got about 128 million for the sale in San Bruno, California. Uh, I see you have listed it at about 63 million, which speaks to your conservatism. Um, yeah, obviously I would prefer to be you know doing these valuations as conservatively as possible. And I mentioned briefly in the last video that. It's kind of a hard one to quantify, but where possible, when I was putting in an address for one of the Heritage properties and getting a um, you know a good comp for that, um, you know similar property, similar area, uh, ideally similar size. Although there were a lot of really big Heritage properties, it was hard to get properties that big in some cases to to compare. Um, you know, I tried to be conservative where possible. So if there were sort of two properties that looked kind of similar, I was tending to take the lower one most of the time, unless there was some good reason for, for not picking that. Maybe the lower one was just bare land and they had a retail comp slightly higher, which was a better comparison or something. But um, I've tried to be conservative. And, um, you know, the example here around 128 million versus 63 million that I had it in, there will be properties in there where it's the exact reverse. <laughs> you know, on an individual property basis, I am not going to have had it um, perfect. So that's just something to bear in mind. But hopefully on a overall portfolio basis, I'm in the right ballpark and potentially a little conservative. Um, we've obviously talked about, you know, property prices potentially being really high at the moment, uh, historic, you know, cap rates, and historically low cap rates, aka sort of high multiples and high prices at the moment. So hopefully, again, there's enough conservatism and margin of safety built in here to um, offer some downside protection. But of course, I, I can always be wrong, right? So that's some thoughts on that. I would much prefer to have found, um, you know, something like Seritage where when maybe a 10% cap rate or a 12% cap rate was kind of the norm uh, and we had these really fat cash flows coming off uh, the real estate properties. Uh, unfortunately, that's just not the environment we're in right now and properties for the most part just do not trade at those kinds of low prices. Uh, they're, they're trading at you know, six, 7% cap rates is probably some of the cheaper properties going around at the moment in commercial real estate in the States, uh, as far as I've seen at least. And, you know, Seritage have liquidated some properties even dipping into the high 4% cap rate. Admittedly, that sort of pre-redevelopment and there's potentially a lot of room to shift the net operating income up at those properties if there is some money that kind of goes into it. But um, yeah, there's some there's some pretty high prices being paid for properties right now. So again, hopefully I'm I'm in the right ballpark on this. Now, one last thought from the comment section that I want to have a look at because there are a couple of comments uh, around this. And uh, the example one I'll take here is from TRTG. If current liquidation value is greater than 2025 value, then shouldn't they just liquidate now? it would also be a lot less risk in the execution. Yeah, that, that is a very good point. So I had the liquidation value today um, higher than the 2025 value. So effectively uh, between 2022 and uh, 2025 over the next three years, uh, we're not potentially creating any new value um, through this process. And I don't think that is really how it probably should look. I think there's potentially some culprits in, in my work for that. You know, maybe I'm overestimating capital expenditures, but we've already talked about probably wanting to be pretty conservative in that department. And uh, maybe I'm underestimating the premier developments. You know, I, um, I, I had about 800 million in there for CapEx, like I say, and I'll put the valuations that I came up with for the uh, premier properties up here. And uh, you know, that is not a whole lot higher than the 800 million figure that I had for capital expenditure. So um, there's a chance that they're generating a lot higher returns than I'm giving them credit for between now and 2025 with these improvements and in, in, um, in some of their big, you know, really valuable assets. And uh, you know that's that's probably something to bear in mind as well. But there's definitely execution risk, and um, the liquidation value I should say is 
in many ways theoretical it's not physically possible to of course sell every property tomorrow um, you know it could be a one two maybe three year process even to actually go out and do that and with some of the properties there are going to be carrying costs you know there's going to be negative cash flows on some of the properties that they have they also don't look attractive for redevelopment and if they're just kind of sitting there take a while, taking a while to sell, that can actually eat away at that liquidation value. So um, that's certainly something to keep in mind. Uh, just because you're selling properties doesn't necessarily mean there's no uh, management execution that you know needs to be involved here. There's sort of execution risks in both. Although um, you know I, I can definitely see where you're coming from with potentially more execution risk in the development uh, kind of scenario. And on that same token around potentially being too conservative for uh, some of these properties, uh, I used, I, I think it was a 55% net operating income margin to value some of those premier development uh, properties. And uh, that is potentially quite conservative. There's a link in that spreadsheet if you download it from the Dropbox link on the last video that will show you some links and things to where I got some of those assumptions. Um, but Seritage does have these triple net lease structures on a lot of their properties. I'm not quite sure how that's going to look on the larger developments, but um, you know the triple net leases are basically the tenant pays the three big uh, nets of cost, which are basically things like property taxes, uh, maybe maintaining the building and insurance and some other things. And uh, you know since those costs are taken care of, potentially the margin is much higher at those properties that I'm giving SRG credit for and therefore uh, the net operating income and the value of the property is much higher as well. Uh, you know, we have a, a comment here from Kenneth saying, uh, one quick question on your scenario too, did you count the market commercial value of SRGs, several large redevelopment properties in Dallas and other cities? I'm from an architect and real estate uh, development background and that Dallas project itself when completed could, could easily be worth one to $2 billion in market value, which is a whole lot higher than uh, I was giving SRG credit for. So those are some of the key questions and comments that uh, I just wanted to kind of talk through and share my thoughts on from the previous video. Um, this is a really interesting case study. It's not a, I, it's not one of these very simple six inch bar type businesses. I think Seritage has the potential to be that if they can get this fully redeveloped um, portfolio of cash flow and real estate that becomes a much more simple uh, scenario to analyze and you know looking back a couple of years here on YouTube I was very hesitant to share a lot of, a lot of the companies I was looking into let alone invested in uh, on this channel and one of the reasons for that I didn't want people copying me I still don't please do your own research on these things um, but one of the things I really never considered back then is that if I do share my ideas you know around particular investments on the channel you know there's some really smart people out there that watch these videos and uh, it's fantastic to be able to get this feedback to um, you know make me think of things or consider things that I might not have thought of uh, on my own uh, you know sitting in a quiet room trying to um, you know go zen and th think through all the scenarios about heritage so fantastic to get that feedback really appreciate it um, and yeah that's all I've got for this one so thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy it please hit like and also subscribe if you are new here and I will see you in the next video cheers